So by now we are done with the models part and we have to start coding the interfaces part. Interfaces are nothing but just HTML and CSS that are going to be displayed by the browser. So before we can start that, let's get the bootstrap into our project. To do that, just Google get bootstrap, go to this website and download this file. Once this file is downloaded, Once this file is downloaded, just go to this folder, go to your project folder and inside your app, create a new folder called static and just move your entire folder into that. And let's extract here. So now our project will be using this bootstrap CSS automatically when we are uh, rendering the template provided we just uh, provided we link those two together so let me show you how that's done so after we added static folder into our project now we have to start generating the templates that are that is going to be rendered by the python backend so to do that let's use the django convention of uh, having a folder named templates this templates folder is going to hold all the html files that are going to be rendered so Let's say our first our first page will be the index.index.html. This is going to be the face of the website. So anything, uh, whenever user comes into this, this page is going to be rendered. And say your page has a navigation bar at the top and every page in that website needs to have the same navigation bar in the top. So without coding the navigation bar for every website, we can also use something called as template inheritance. Uh, we can define one we can define one template and use the template to be inherited by the rest of the templates and all the code will be substituted for each template that is being inherited. So let's use that to our advantage and have a base.html. So in this base.html we are going to create the nav bar or the navigation bar on the top and we are going to inherit this base.html by all other pages so that we don't have to recode the navigation bar. So let's start writing the base. Let's have a head, title, inventory. Now, we have to, as I mentioned, we have to link the HTML page with the CSS uh, we have downloaded just now. So we have to link style sheet. In the href, we have to use something called as a Jinja2 templating language. In, in this, we have to mention the static directory where, the, where our files are present. So you have to use this percent signs static and mention the directory. This basically this automatically uh, goes into the static folder, static folder which you have created because this happens because this settings.py file already has a set static folder. So it's automatically going, uh, it will automatically go to the static folder and fetch those files for you. If you want to change the directory or change the name or something, then you have to change it in the settings.py file too. So let's link this link, link the CSS. This is style.css which I haven't created yet. We are going to use the style.css later uh, when we when we have to make some minor adjustments to our elements in the tag. Let's add the bootstrap file too. min.css only these only the min.css is required by the django or by the html page rest of them can delete can be deleted i'll just leave it there for now let's have a body and in this body let's have a navigation bar instead of coding the entire navigation bar let's just get a navigation bar from here This is the bootstrap 3.1. So here are a few navigation bars which you can use in our in, in our project. So let's use the second one, view page source. And in this page source, let's grab 
the second navigation bar copy and let's paste it in our base and that's it we have a navigation bar for now and let's add a container this is also a bootstrap container bootstrap class container and from this and this is a section where every other template is going to override so we have a block body yeah every time you start a block we have to end the block so this is the section which is going to be overridden by the rest of the templates if um, say we have some con some statements some html elements in this base.html and we if, if we have the same uh, html tags in an another template that is inheriting the base it is going to replace this section and render what's defined in there now we're done coding the base.html let's get started with the index.html and as i mentioned before about template inheritance let in let's inherit base.html into index we can do that we can do that by saying extends And this is going to completely extend the base.html so the entire code which is present in the navigation bar and all is going to be inherited by the index and it's also going to it's also going to have the same navigation bar now let's replace the body body part of the base.html so let's say block body this is going to replace the entire file entire block dot body sorry block body from base.html that is this section so the rest of the section will, be, will remain the same only this section will be replaced by index.html so let's end block don't forget to end block every time you start a block so in this section we have we can code anything that is going to be contained in a container of this div tag so what what should we have remember we have three buttons and each button ha um, each button had an add button which you could add elements to and we had a table that had about four columns so let's let's reflect that in our index.html so remember we had three buttons that were that was used to show information in the web in the index page let's add those three buttons let's start off by having a div tag class say button group this is not an uh, bootstrap class this is user defined class let's add three reference tags it will leave the link uh, we'll leave the link for now uh, we're going to come back and edit this later as this is the, as this is the most important uh, part of the HTML index page we're going to say class equals button this is a bootstrap button primary and medium size role equals to button let's say this is laptops and remember we had an add button corresponding to this laptops button so let's also add the add button corresponding to this we're gonna just say plus so we don't need anything else right now we're gonna say button warning and let's reduce the size to small so we had three three parts of these so laptops add button desktops add button and mobiles add button so let's do that just let's replace this desktops and mobiles we're going to replace the uh, link part soon after we complete the urls part i'm going to tell you what are what are urls and all don't worry and what we had uh, what we had later is a is a table right so let's start the table let's say the class of the table is the table this is a bootstrap class again hover table and in this table we had four columns so let's add four columns ID let's we have four columns model price status and after that we had T body we're gonna we're going to populate T body after we complete the uh, let's say after we complete uh, the views part 
we'll add this after completing the views part and what else do we need after t body i think that's it t body is enough we'll just complete the index of html later and let's see what we have made till now so django uses url dispatch uh, to render to render templates and uh, this is basically the bridge between the back end and the front end so whenever you're going to access an url that is going to call a particular function from the back end and going to render the website so let's connect let's start uh, defining the urls that um, we don't have urls for file inside inventory yet but we have an urls file outside uh, the inventory that is a main main project for main project folder in that urls folder we in that in main folder we have an urls file and you can al already see that we have an admin admin path already inside the urls so uh, you can access you can actually access the admin directly so let's open uh, open the website run server so as you can see if you go to forward slash admin it actually uh, enters the admin panel of the website so as you can see basically the urls are the major part of the django backend so whatever you whatever functions you are writing you have to link them through the urls then only you can then only you can actually use those functions so let's create an url file inside our project inside our app let's name it urls.py it's totally empty for now and we are going to say to the main project folder to include all the url files that are being defined in the inventory to do that it's fairly simple we have to just say path empty and say include inventory dot urls this is going to include all the urls that are defined in the urls uh, sorry inventory project and as you can see we don't have the include function so let's import include that's in the urls and that's it we don't have to open the urls in the main project folder again we can all define all urls in the app specific app from now so there's a standard convention of writing the urls.py file that is that the django is going to uh, specifically look for so let's start writing the urls.py file from django.conf.urls import url and we are going to write the url patterns this has to be specifically named url patterns in order for the django to de detect and inside here we can actually write all the url elements so let's write the first url element to connect our to connect our index page to our function we are going to write a regular expression right here we are going to start the regular expression with the this symbol and end the regular expression with the dollar symbol we're going to write the our function name which we haven't defined yet and we're going to give a name to this function so this is the name of the function that we are going to link this specific url to so let's we have to write all the functions in a specific file called views.py this is the this is the file where we have to write define all the function maybe made be function based view or a class based view so to see what we have made till now let's write a simple view that is going to render the index file for us we're going to pass in the request that is a django convention and we're going to return render request and we're going to render the index.html file and this is going to directly jump into the templates folder which we have defined and bring the index.html and render it for us and that is being done because the url is url is connected with the this specific function and make sure this is same as the function name and as you can see in the urls.py file we don't have index imported yet so we have to import the index file to do to do that we have to say dot views that's say that is saying one directory up import index so let's see what we have made till now let's run our server and uh, it seems we are not we have some error okay so i think we uh, we forgot about uh, importing the actually writing the load static tag see whenever you are saying static we have to mention a we have to mention the jinja2 templating language to load those files we're going to say that by saying load static i think that's enough yeah 
now as you can see this is what we made till now this is the nav bar which we have coded till now i mean which we have copied from the uh, bootstrap bootstrap uh, website and these are the buttons let me show you uh, this index one okay these are the buttons which we have uh, written here and this is the table headers which we have just written 